G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder and welcome to the Apex Predators live server. This is the F4EJ Kai and today we will be having a look at it and its new weapons. It's also had a slightly reworked flight model from what I know um, and it's also got a slightly reworked radar but you know 11.3 it's an F4 Phantom how's it going to go fighting things like the MiG-29? How's it going to go fighting things like the F-16? The F-16 is a pretty impressive plane it's got a very high turn rate at low speeds it's got you know, 9Ls, it's got AIM-7Ms, it's pretty capable, the F-14 as well, this plane has been sort of swept under the rug ever since the F-14 came into the into the fray, um, and that's simply because the F-14 is a really, really good plane, and we'll be having a look at the F-14 a little bit later on in uh, the, the videos as the patch sort of rolls forward, um, but the F-4 EJ Kai is one of the planes that has stuck around for a very long time and has remained under the sort of in the shadows for the last few months. But now because of its uh, 9Ls, it has more or less come to the forefront. And I think that this plane is really good. It does still have the issue where you will face F-14s and the F-14s have equal weapons to you. So it is a matter of whoever locks who first and whoever fires a missile at who first ends up winning the engagement. Of course, the benefit of the F-14 uh, is that you have the performance over this plane, but that is a slight trade-off here with the F-4 EJ Kai because of the AIM-9Ls, and I think that offsets it fairly decently well. The F-14 is still better, but the F-4 EJ Kai is definitely a lot more competitive than it was with the AIM-9Ps. At the moment, we are pretty much in, I believe this is a somewhat down tier, but at the end of the day, you don't take any risks anyway because this plane can very easily become breakfast so we are curiously flying next to an MLD and the MLD I'm, I'm not sure why he's catching up or why he's sort of maintaining that speed I'm pretty confident that the MLD can outspeed me very very easily um, but it looks like he's just enjoying the flying it's it's quite beautiful actually it's quite nice to see um, and this guy will sort of come in handy a little bit later in order to set up a kill for me um, I apologize that I couldn't save you spoiler alert but at the moment, the EJ is pretty damn good. The only issue is the AIM-54s are coming from the F-14s. And this is a really big vice for everything that is essentially not an F-14. You are victim to these AIM-54s. You have to turn away from them. And now that they have some sort of improvement to their tracking capabilities, it is a little bit harder to notch them for some reason. I do find that frustrating, but we have to just sort of deal with the hand that we're given and that's exactly what we're going to do we have f16s f14s and this particular f14 looks pretty juicy it looks like the uh, mig-23 has fired a missile but it was not for the f14 i was eventually or originally going to go for him but it looks like the f16 is a juicier target However, the aim7f thinks a little bit differently and just decides to do whatever the hell it wants it's i i genuinely don't know but this is where the AIM-9Ls come in handy. If the AIM-9Ls are going to fail me, then everything is going to fail me. The AIM-9Ls are pretty damn bulletproof, and if no one flares, you have got yourself a very, very easy kill at ranges of up to 4 kilometers. The F5 here is pretty, uh, pretty feeling sorry for himself here. I'm going to fire an AIM-7. He's at altitude. There's not a whole lot he can do. I can probably even turn it off pulse Doppler mode, but it doesn't really matter. F5E, there is not much of a chance for him left. And this F-16 is now the prime target. I'm going to go in. He is going in for the Kfir. And I think I'm going to end up using an AIM-9L on him, just judging by the way he's flying. Um, and it is true. I am going to sort of prep that 9L, send it with the radar slaving, and the F-16 manages to cop it in the face, which is perfect for me. And the F-16 is one plane that you will struggle to fight at low speeds. If you end up in a dogfight, I would consider it uh, pretty much all lost. The F-16 has really, really strong acceleration um, and it's got really good turning. But of course, if you can keep it at those high speeds, like sub, uh, sorry, uh, uh, over a thousand kilometers per hour, you can't really do much if you're an X F-16. You just sort of have to run away and use your speed to your advantage. Now, in this case here, the F-16 is running away and there's not a whole lot that we can do. I've got two 9Ls and two 7Fs uh, and the 7Fs are going to be great, but they don't really have the range in this uh, context here. And so I'm just going to wait for him to turn around. In the meantime, I'm going to go and look for the Su-22. Now, this plane is pretty damn strong at the moment, but you do have to consider that you don't have the turning radius of some of the other planes at this battle rating. I think the best examples here are the MiG-23. At low speeds, you can very easily get shafted by one of those, uh, as well as the uh, F-14, uh, the F-5, 
Uh, but you will be able to easily outturn things like the MiG-29. Uh, you won't have much trouble with a lot of aircraft. And of course, like I said, the F-16 at those higher speeds. The F-14, when it's got its wings back, um, and a lot of people do just tend to throw the wings back and hope for the best. So you, you can still do things. And I think having the extra utility is really nice. This plane does like is very, very limited by its airframe. It is only an F-4 Phantom, and uh, there's not a whole lot that you can do if someone is able to sit on your tail. A J-7E, you're pretty much boned. The MiG-21, hell, you might even be boned from that too. But there are plenty of other options that you can have, and of course you have the standoff capability, if you will, uh, where, uh, where by standoff I mean the ability to sort of lance at your opponent with a greater range than your enemies. Uh, there's an old... Uh, sort of, if you think back through history, you can, you can actually see this being greatly effective in warfare. Uh, the Greeks and the Macedonians ended up fighting, and they had uh, the, the Macedonians just simply had the longest spear. So whoever gets the longest stick ends up winning. And of course, the AIM-7F is the longest stick that we have at the moment that is highly effective. Of course, I can I can say that the uh, AIM-54 Phoenix is the longest stick, and it certainly is. Uh, but its effectiveness is questionable at best, especially when you have uh, 20G overload limits. But you know what, that's, that's actually a really good thing because that ends up being a net benefit to the matchmaker. Speaking of the net benefit to the matchmaker, I believe this change here is a net benefit to the matchmaker. Having the F4 EJ Kai at uh, 11.3 with these missiles is a little bit of power creep and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, and of course the SU-22 has been nicely set up by the uh, MiG-23 MLD who has sacrificed his life to set up that kill for me. So I greatly appreciate that. Kill number four. So overall health of the matchmaker. We have a lot of discussion about this and the matchmaker at the moment is very, very cancerous because there is just a lot of missile slinging and there is not a lot that you can do with some of these, particularly the AIM-7s. And they are really, really powerful this patch. There are very few missiles that can be addressed, particularly when coming from the F-14. The F-14 has a particularly strong radar, and I will make a video on it, but I do believe it is the best jet at this time. It is better than the MiG-29, it is better than the F-16, uh, F and I think it is just overall more capable. We will get to that. I think I'm going to throw up a MiG-29 video first, and we can discuss the MiG-29. But... The F-4 EJ Kai is still extremely capable and has plenty of things that it can do up its sleeve. Uh, the radar is probably the second best in the game after the F-14s, um, and of course that would put it in line with the F-16. Um, I do really like this plane, and I genuinely think that this is an excellent plane to add to the game. And uh, whilst we are closing in here on this F-16, which uh, won't really happen for very long, but then again, the F-16 decides he wants to turn around. So, you know what? That works very, very well for me. And here we go. A, a nice little dogfight here with the F-16 is going to ensue. And I just have to stress that if I lose all of my speed, I'm toast here. But I'm trusting my teammates, which is a fool's game, but I'm trusting my teammates to try and bring this in towards me just to get myself uh, a, a single shot at goal here. Now, the F-16 has compressed. I am going to lock up and send an AIM-9L. Very, very narrowly dodge that uh, AIM-9L from the <laughs> F-16 and manage to just snipe in that AIM-9L myself. Nice little missile duel ending in my favor. Kind of lucky. But at the same time, this is what the F-4 EJ Kai is capable of. A cheeky little ace, a very nice end to the match. And of course, we are going to get into what I believe to be the worst case scenario. This is a full down tier. We are facing 10.3s, and this is going to be a bit of a massacre. The EJ Kai is very, very strong now, and of course, because it is 11.3, it does get to see 10.3s. And this is just a little bit unfair. Aim 9 ls are all good and well at top tier, but when you are 1,200 kilometers plus, you can easily, easily dodge it. But when you're below that, well, you're just going to have a tough time. Jets like the MiG-21 SMT and MF are really going to struggle at these particular battle ratings when they're fully up-tiered. And of course, there are A-10s, F-5Cs that just simply cannot catch and cannot dogfight unless your opponent makes a critical mistake, and that being the F-4EJ making the critical mistake here. I think that this is a little bit unfair, and I think that this is a little bit beyond the capabilities of something like an F-5C or even a MiG-21 SMT. 
this is a little bit of a big downside of this particular matchmaker. I think this calls for a bit more battle rating decompression, and I think that this is something that we can discuss in another video. Perhaps I could update my list, perhaps I could give you guys a little bit of a rundown of what I think, but, you know, the F4EJ with 9Ls facing F8Es, I believe to be kind of unfair. Of course, there is a slight benefit for these single engine, uh, it's like Mac 1 type jets that are not able to really push that speed, is the fact that they have fairly uh, cool engines. They are not particularly warm, and so they are less susceptible to flares. And that's a, a small concession at best. So I feel that the F4EJ Kai is really, really strong in a full down tier. That being said, we still have F14s here to keep us in check, and we need to deal with them. But first, we're going to go for some uh, seal clubbing. The F8E is looking super juicy. I'm going to send a uh, 7F there. At about a 4 kilometer range is the sort of most wild aspect that I'll send a 7F. Uh, anything else, I'll probably just go and use the 9Ls because the 9Ls are very, very competent. And when an enemy is not looking at you, you can get some very, very easy kills. So this F5 is looking super juicy and I'm just going to send a 9L because of the wide aspect and the propensity for notching. But unfortunately for me, the F5C has some brain cells and so is using the flares, using that, uh, I don't know what key you guys have got it to, but I've got it dabbed to my 5 key and that is a pretty easy spot to reach regardless of where you are. This F5, however, has run out of talent and has uh, unfortunately succumbed to the prowess of the 9L. And that leaves a few more, le a few fewer enemies on the table. We have five missiles left. That means that we can potentially get ourselves five kills. I'm just looking up at altitude to make sure that there are no opponents that can pose a serious threat before engaging other things like the F5 or the A7D. I'm going to cross across these uh, AI, which shouldn't really be in the game, but we are looking here primarily at the F14. I think the F14 is the biggest threat, and there's another one, and this is going to be quite tough, but. I do see that A10, and I consider the A10 to be a serious threat in the right hands. So I'm just going to sort of prep an, uh, a 7F, but unfortunately he's, uh, you know, inadvertently notching. Uh, this means that we are too close for missiles. We are going to go guns, guns, guns. I have set a, a 9L, but it looks like it is still going to strike home. You still have to turn. You still have to put your engine behind the uh, the flares, and that is how you get rid of these particular missiles. But you know what, that speaks volumes about how strong the 9Ls are and how potent this plane really is. The A7D doesn't really stand a chance because of the Vulcan here. Uh, but you know, if I had a bit more distance, I could have used a 7F. And that would have been a, another sort of trick up my sleeve. But the 7F here is instead going to go to the F14, who I believe has sent something my way anyway. But you know, last second decides to dodge. The F5 is also looking super juicy, but... That F-14 is posing a greater threat. If he is firing a semi-active radar homing missile at an enemy, it means that he is not firing a semi-active radar homing missile at me, and that means that I can fire a semi-active radar homing missile at him, which allows me to even the score here. We are at five kills, and we are going to go for some more. It looks like the F-5 is going to be a bit of a, a bit of a challenge here. He is going to come across my screen, so I am assuming that he's paying attention more to the MiG-23, but he does flare. He's got that nice little engine there and I'm gonna sort of go with guns go for a little critical hit there and that should be enough to eventually take him down I'm gonna turn my attention here to the a7d which is going to potentially pose a threat to my uh, my teammates here the four kilometers and closing is pretty damn close the a7 ev eventually bleh, crashes and the f5 is the only enemy left on the team I have no more missiles but I certainly have enough guns and I certainly have enough fuel to see the rest of the match out. The F5 is unable to keep up with me. It is highly likely that he has a damaged engine and it is going to be a fairly easy run from here. I have him energy trapped and the F4EJ is just going to do the rest of the work, bringing me that bread just absolutely beautifully. We are pretty much done here. This F5 hasn't got much left. And if the MLD doesn't kill him, he's certainly going to die to my hands and to my Vulcan. So it's a very easy done deal here. And I think this is kind of unfair, to be honest, because the uh, the 10.3s don't actually stand a chance. The A7D doesn't stand a chance. The F5C doesn't stand a chance, particularly at ranges of 10 plus kilometers where you have that AIM 7F. I'm going to call it a standoff weapon because in War Thunder, it kind of does act as a, as a big stick. So because you have the biggest stick, you get the most smiles, and this plane is actually fairly decent to fly 
even against the F-14. Provided that you lock your F-14s first, you are able to very easily deal with them. And if you don't have the F-14 uh, to, to deal with, well, you get a seven kill game like this. And this is like one of the highest kill games that I've ever gotten. And uh, I'm very impressed by the capabilities of the EJ Kai. So ladies and gentlemen, I greatly appreciate you watching this video. This is all for today, and I would just like to thank you all for supporting the channel, particularly through the decal link, particularly through air models. They've come up absolutely massive. I have several projects that I'm just about to finish because of you guys. So thank you so much. I greatly, greatly appreciate that. So thank you very much for watching. I sincerely appreciate your time. If you would like to watch something else, there should be a suggestion up on screen right about now. But for, until then, take care, and I'll catch you next time.